One time I told Erin that she was a jellyfish because jellyfish, they're so beautiful and they look so delicate, but if you mess with them, they can reduce grown men to tears. And I feel like she has that ferocity in her as well. Like, I think it started as kind of like this black cloud that was like over me and it was there all the time. And then it kind of like came down onto me and it like, it would like squeeze you and it would like bring like spikes into you and it would, and it just kind of kept squeezing tighter and tighter and getting sharper and sharper. But somehow there's always something in your mind that, that makes it okay. Something like you, you deserve that pain or you deserve whatever those spikes are drilling into you. Um, so like I'd wake up in the morning and I'd do body checks. Like I'd be laying down and I would check that my hip bones were still sticking out and then I'd sit up and I would check that my collarbones were still sticking out and then I'd stand up and I'd check that like my spine, like I could still feel all the notches. And like it, like it seemed so natural at the time and it seemed like that's what I should be doing. And she would spend a lot of time not eating or finding ways to avoid eating. So it affected, obviously it affected her body um, and it affected her mental state a lot. She was sad and sleeping more um, and she was always cold. So she had to have a space heater all the time. She was just very closed off more, um, which was frustrating for me because I wanted to be with her and spend time with her and like be her best friend. I didn't know why it was happening. So I went to a school guidance counselor. They referred me to someone at the health unit. I had to get a referral from my family doctor to get to the eating disorder clinic. And um, that's when I got my diagnosis and they were like, you have anorexia nervosa. At that point I was still like, I don't really care. There's nothing wrong with me. She really got into art therapy, doing a lot of uh, drawing and, and poems and reading. She got into crayon art really big. Um, I think that it was a, like a creative outlet that she could use to channel some of her frustration and uh, um, sadness into. And so sometimes she made really dark art or dark writing, and then other times she made more inspirational things. She just put some of the positive and the negative out on paper. Fragile hair begins to fall out. Fragile fingernails are bitten until they bleed. Thoughts turn black. A mind now only knows numbers. But should you ask me how I feel, fragile is the last thing I would say. At the time, I didn't really like talking about it. It wasn't something that I was comfortable with or really understood. Um, like kind of throughout the recovery process of the past like three years, I don't want to say like I love talking about eating disorders, but like I do. Um, I think not that they're not that they're like necessarily interesting, but I think that it's something that does like you have to be able to talk about and you have to be able to like say the words, and there has to be like someone in your life who is comfortable with them and who um, like can talk about them openly without them being scary, um, because that just that just adds to it. That just makes it even more of like a monster in your mind and that just adds to the sharpness of that cloud. Uh, right now I go to the University of Waterloo um, inside St. Jerome's, which is kind of a smaller school within Waterloo. At St. Jerome's we have like a student activities team um, and so then at the beginning of that winter term, the SATs kind of all have a big like brainstorming event. Um, and so you can put on little like post-it notes, your ideas, and they all go up and then we read them out and we like vote on them. So I went in and I got this purple post-it note and I wrote like eating disorder awareness event. And so I went and I put it up on the board and it was really scary. <laughs> and so when I sat down and they were like reading them all off and um, they were like eating disorder awareness event and people kind of like looked around and they're like, okay, like what does this mean? Um, and I kind of like raised my hand and I was like, that's my idea. And then. I kind of went off on this like tangent of all these ideas I had and like the fact that it would be called SJ Were Beautiful and like that I wanted like a media campaign and that I wanted um, all this stuff. When she was done, there was just kind of like this moment of quiet and then everybody just clapped for her because it was just, it was so incredible that she had thought it through so intensely. In the residence, we like covered up the mirrors and we just had a little thing saying like, maybe just for like today, like don't worry so much about how you look. There was a station in the calf where um, you had all these whiteboards and you could write like a message to yourself on the whiteboard and then take a picture with it. We had the kind of like social media um, stuff. So I took over the St. Jerome's University um, Instagram for that week. Um, and our two hashtags were um, SJU are beautiful, which was just the name of the week. And um, 
and then just SJ Untouched, um, which was kind of like the whole like make a bliss. Um, like however you woke up, like that is you, like in your like in your natural state, and like there's nothing wrong with that. Dear 16 year old me, you will consider getting side bangs. Don't. I know you're feeling kind of lost and isolated right now. And I know you're figuring out so much. I want you to know that it's going to be okay. Dear 16 year old me um, was an idea that Aaron had to have um, different leaders in the community write a letter as if they were writing it to their 16 year old self. And then um, she filmed all of these different letters and then cut them together and created this, this video, Dear 16 year old me. I know you think that it's normal for you to be like terrified of your boobs and to hate your name and to hate it every time anyone calls you miss. But as it turns out, we're a guy. So he'll make it through this and the next few years are gonna be absolutely terrifying, but it is so worth it, man. One day you're gonna find out your worth and I need you to hold out for that day because it does come. It was up for a day and there were just like 20 shares of it on like my Facebook profile of people who were part of like St. Jerome's and people who were not. I've struggled a lot with body image things throughout my life and I think that week was just like a really nice reminder to be okay with who you are and, and where you've come from and what you look like. I'm sorry about that sad little feeling in the bottom of your stomach. It never really goes away. You just learn how to deal with it. But I'm so proud of you for pushing on. You didn't give up and I'm so proud of you. So the blog Eating Disorder Confession is a blog that my friend Tegan and I started together um, that we now run with our friend Trelawney. And the idea is that people can submit um, their anonymous confessions um, about their, their experiences or their thoughts with disordered eating or eating disorders, and then we post those. It's just a place where like, if you're like, I need to say this or I need to know that people understand this, they can, they can write that and they can send it in and it'll get posted and they can see other people reply to it or reblog it or like it and they can kind of see, wow, like I'm not the only one who thought this or I'm not the only one who feels this. And they can go through the like thousands and thousands of confessions we have and like see themselves in other people's words. And I think that that is such an important connection to be made between people because it allows them to see that through this disorder that just like causes people just to feel so alone and so cut off from the world to see that like there are other people who are feeling the way that you're feeling and there are other people who who are struggling the way that you're struggling without it like taking away from their experience. We do get responses that are like because of this blog like I chose to recover or because of this blog like I am still here. Someone might just send in like I ate today and like I don't want to be like cliche and cheesy about this but like those are like the things that like make it worth it you know and those are the ones that you're like holy crap like we did that She's involved in so many things, and I think the organization of that is amazing, for one thing. But I think she also just takes on every single one that she does so humbly. Mm -hmm. um, like, it, unless you are really, like, really know her and ask her what she's doing, like, you might not know everything that she's doing. It's not, it's not, she's not doing it to, uh, for her own personal gain. She's really doing it to help others, and it's very genuine. And I, I told her, I said, think of all the accomplish, accomplishments you've made already and you're only 20. But she doesn't like to think about herself as even 20, so. <laughs> Mental illnesses today are getting a lot more recognition than they were. Um, they're still quite taboo in a sense, or just there's a lot of stigma and there's a lot of, a lot of misunderstandings and um, misconceptions about them. Erin's just very open, and that's what we need. We need people who aren't afraid to talk about it, but aren't 
in the sense they don't talk about it as a woe is me. They just say, this is what's up. This is what's real. It's something we have to talk about. If we don't talk about it, uh, one, one phrase I've heard is like, silence is the number one killer when it comes to things like eating disorders or depression. Yeah, she just brings it to light, but without making it a big like show of, oh, this is what I'm going through. It's just like, this is happening and this is what we need to talk about. I would love to just see more, more work be done in the direction of self-acceptance. And I'd love to see more work be done towards fighting things like mental illness and, and especially eating disorders. Um, I'd love to just see kind of that, that army get bigger and, and that, that voice get louder continuously until eventually there's no one to, to voice that opinion to because that's just everyone. Um, I think that's kind of my, my like goal.